Hey guys, hello and welcome to Zen Innovations. And in the last video, guys, I showed you how to repair this kind of LED panel by shorting out the faulty chips. Now, what that uh, what that method uh, simply did is that uh, when any of the chip goes faulty, and as these things are in a series, that kind of broken circuit turns off all the LEDs, and hence this LED panels goes bad. So in that video, I showed you that uh, you can just uh, short out these LED, uh, the individual. Uh, LED chips which have gone bad and that completes the circuit and this whole LED panel lights up. Now that kind of method also has some serious drawbacks and the drawback is that basically all the LEDs in this uh, COB panel have become old or you can say they are on their way out and what happens is that when we short just one or two LEDs and the LED panel happily works for a week or two or maybe if you are lucky it works for a few months and then again uh, as some other LED has failed this uh, entire circuit shuts down and you have the same problem on your hands again and again. So uh, today in this video guys we are going to repair this LED panel in a completely different manner. Now what we are going to do is we are actually going to replace this uh, MCPCB basically this entire array of LED chips uh, using a very standard COB LED array and as you can see here this is an original Cree uh, Cree LED array and this uh, each LED is worth 36 volts and it can take up uh, it can take up to 15 watts so let me quickly explain you how to buy these standard kind of COB arrays and to buy these uh, COB arrays guys the first thing that uh, you need to look for is your LED driver so here is how your LED driver looks and I'll try putting a photo up for you guys because okay so the focus is done and as we can see here this LED driver uh, offers a particular range of LED which it supports now this particular uh, driver says that it can take somewhere from 8 to 12 LEDs now on an average we can say that each LED chip is worth 3 volts so we can multiply these figures now 8 into 3 is 24 volts 12 into 3 is 36 volt. So basically what this driver is saying that we can buy any COB LED array which is between 24 to 36 volt. And uh, for this kind of LED panel guys I brought these uh, original Cree uh, 36 volt COB arrays you can say the chip on board kind of arrays. And the fun part here is that just one chip. So this single little chip is going to replace all of this junk over here. And that uh, tells you a lot about the kind of quality, the kind of superior uh, chip quality that we see on these original LEDs. And over here guys we are going to kill two birds with one stone. Now as you can see here that these uh, normal LEDs are 6000K or you can say the cold white. And I absolutely hate these kind of LEDs but uh, the market is completely flooded with this kind of bluish white kind of LEDs which I don't like. So we are going to kill two birds with one stone. Not only we are going to repair this LED panel and we are going to get it working once again, but I have, uh, we are going to uh, change the color, the color temperature, the CCT, the CRI of this LED panel and we are going with a very nice 4000K. You can say the neutral white kind of LED with a very good CRI so the colors are going to pop, they are going to look, look good and basically my face is going to look better in your YouTube videos. So this is how you buy a COB arrays by comparing it with your driver. Let me explain it to you with a smaller kind of driver which I have here. So the method is uh, practically the same as you can see here. This driver uh, supports somewhere between 4 to 7 LEDs as you can see over here. So 4 into 3 again uh, 12 volts, 7 into 3 20, 21 volts. So any LED which is between you can say uh, 12 volts to 21 volts can be used with this LED driver. The other specification is milliamps. So 300 milliamps is the uh, kind of you can say the industry standard for LEDs. And by the way guys so I did not find any LEDs which is uh, between you can say 12 to 18 volts or maximum 20 volts so what I ended up buying is I actually brought this thing so this is the COB LED which I brought and uh, these uh, LEDs uh, work somewhere from 9 to 11 volts and for this kind of small LED panel what we are going to do is we are going to put two of these in series so that we get an effective uh, you can say the maximum voltage of somewhere around 20 volts and two of these will be perfect to replace the MCPCB in this uh, smaller uh, LED panel. Before we begin this video guys let me tell you what we are going to need before we start the repairing process. Now of course you need these kind of COB panels. I taught you how to buy these so that you can buy the appropriate voltage ones. Apart from that 
we need a bit of super glue so any kind of cyano acrylate glue you can use over here very quick or the other ones super glue ones so basically you can buy them the other thing which we need is a heat sink compound now this is what a lot of uh, you can say the cheap companies have been skipping and you can as uh, you can very clearly see here this is very evident with the kind of failure that we had absolutely no heat sink compound which means that this mcpcb kept overheating and it died so we will be using this heat sink compound and other than that you need your uh, basically the uh, you know usual itty bitty stuff so your uh, wire strippers your toolkit your soldering iron your uh, screwdriver so all of that thing so guys let me arrange this all for you and let's begin this video and before we do that guys uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends let's start the video Guys, to begin the repair, we see that there are these four screws over here. So let's undo them quickly so that we can uh, take a look what's inside. All right, guys. So after undoing those four screws, we can see that the LED here is in two parts. Now this part over here is the diffuser, which helps uh, diffuse the light. And but our interest today will be in this part. So this is known as the MC PCB. Basically, this is the metal core PCB. and we are going to undo these uh, two screws over here so that we can remove this entire contraption out of here and replace it with the uh, our own choice of cob leds so let's open these two screws guys now we will desolder these uh, default wires which are attached to this mc pcb using our soldering iron guys after desoldering these uh, wires this entire mc pcb is going to come out and sometimes it is glued down using thermal paste or thermal adhesive so it could need a little bit of prying to come out so let's remove this mc pcb and as we see here very poor application of thermal paste so just a bit of patch here and there and this is not the kind of workmanship which i like now let's prepare this tiny little original cree led using the heat sink compound and then install it on these panels so i have prepared uh, four of these panels as you can see here and the two little ones so uh, to apply this uh, kind of uh, heat sink compound i suggest that you don't use your hands because this uh, thing could be toxic so you could use a screw driver or you could uh, use a, a bit of old credit card uh, credit card will give you a smoother better uh, application i'm just going to use uh, a screw driver and as we can see here the quantity which is required is pretty small so let me show you how to apply a uh, thermal paste on this led so here is how the led looks and let's apply the thermal paste basically you want a very thin layer as thin as possible but you want it to be very evenly spread across so spread it around all the way if possible use a small credit card and here is how the application looks basically you don't want to overdo it let me focus the camera for you so that you can see here and here is how the application looks and now to install this what we are going to do is we will simply use a drop of super glue basically the smallest drop which uh, you can put on this uh, uh, piece of led you can say so here is how i put a very small drop of super glue let me try focusing the camera again for you guys so the drop which is required is very small the least amount of drop which you can put and uh, now what we will do is we will simply uh, drop this led on top of this uh, housing and here is how it goes try centering it as much as possible so here is how this thing looks it looks a little bit funny because you have a very large housing and you have this tiny little led over here press on it a little bit and here is how it looks and we will wait for around 15 minutes for this to settle and then it will be glued in very nicely and we can begin soldering these wires all right guys so we have glued all of these leds and after about 15 minutes they have become very solid and now what we are going to do is we will tin these contacts and solder the original wires to these led chips so here is how the large panel looks and here is how the smaller panels look so basically i had to use two of these chips to achieve a forward voltage of somewhere around 20 volts 
we are going to solder these wires in and to uh, make them in series i also made a little bit of these uh, jumper wires you can say little pieces of copper wire which will help us create a series connection between two of these chips and guys let me tell you a fun fact that uh, even if we have used super glue over here let me tell you that this is actually reworkable because the use of a thermal compound you can say that it makes the super glue weak so it is going to stay firmly in place but in case if you need to rework this project and if you need to remove this led you can actually pry it out without ruining the led this is uh, what my experience says so let's start tinning these connections and let's put this uh, let's put this mains wire here and solder it on So guys here is how the tinned connections look So guys the project is mostly done and as you can see that this is how the larger LED panel looks and here is how the smaller LED panels look so basically this is the positive and negative wire coming from the driver and here is how I have made them in series so that we have these uh, two LED chips with an effective forward voltage of roughly 20 volts so guys let's plug this in and let's test them all right guys so i have plugged them in and let's uh, turn them on so here is how they look and when you focus at them using the camera actually you can see the hotspot but with the bare eyes and especially with the diffuser on actually you can't see any hotspot and the good thing over here guys is that the heat actually has gone down so these panels are barely lukewarm. Now earlier when these had the uh, kind of uh, poor quality LED chips or you can say those uh, local LED chips, the entire panel used to heat up. But I tried the, uh, these things on for one hour continuously and they are barely lukewarm. Actually you can't even say lukewarm. So these things are, uh, you know, just slightly above skin temperature. So I am very uh, happy about this thing. Guys, before starting this project, I was worried that uh, using just a single LED chip, uh, I'll be having a massive hotspot on this panel. And thankfully, as you can notice here is that after installing the diffuser, this is not the case and entire LED panel is lit very evenly. So the hotspot problem is uh, not a cause of concern as you can see over here, guys. I'm very happy about this. Alright guys, so assembling these LED pieces back is a pretty simple affair. Now we just need to place this uh, diffuser over here first and there are these four screws. So we uh, put the panel over here and we tighten these four screws. So that's that. And by the way guys, if you like seeing videos like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. Take care and have a nice day.